Thank you so much for uh, having us here. It's a great um, honor to see so many people awake so early. We're approaching nine o'clock. Usually I'm not functional before nine in the morning. So we are here to speak on collaboration and uh, we are Fool Agency, a creative agency based in Malmo. And we mainly work with food and gastronomy related projects and clients. I'm an art director and I've been a graphic designer and my specialities are brand identity and uh, magazines. I've been doing this for quite a few years and this is my husband. With a strange name, P.A. Really amuses people in the English speaking countries. So being my own personal assistant, in a way. Anyway. My personal assistant, actually. Sorry? <laughs> my personal yeah, assistant. Yeah, that comes <laughs> with the job. So, uh, basically, I started as a photographer. I'm still a photographer, and I uh, specialize in people and reportage. And um, when people ask me, so what do you shoot? I usually tell them that I shoot uh, stuff that I like, people that I like. That's a brick privilege as well, I think. And I also started out very, very young. Uh, we have a long history, both of us, in our respective fields. Uh, I started uh, 1979. I got my first camera and uh, full-time professional since 1985. I forgot to say I made my first newspaper when I was eight. Sold it. It was five copies. and I think we sold all of them, actually. Eight? Eight wow. years old, yeah. It's amazing. So we were married and we work together. We collaborate 24 seven for sure. And uh, when we met in 2001, we decided to get married almost immediately for some strange reason. And um, we decided to get married at a restaurant, a restaurant we love very much called Mugeritz outside San Sebastian. They thought we were totally nuts coming there, getting married, only having visited them once. Yeah, Marguerite, they usually host weddings that are huge every Sunday. And we were only a few of us yeah. for this wedding. And we even lost the luggage. In so we got in married in t-shirts. In t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, well, not because of that, but after that we were also, even that reinforced our um, relationship with them, I would yeah. say. We have a very special relationship with the Basque people and this restaurant in particular. And um, we actually made the first cookbook in English, yeah. published by Fidon in 2012. Uh, hopefully not because we got married there, but because of other qualities. No, this is usually how we work with people. We try to form a relationships and gain trust in what we do. So we're not just forcing them to work with us. I would say it's more like we're having a uh, mutual trust. Absolutely. And um, yeah. No, we actually, we love San Sebastian so much. If we one day retire, we think we should move there. And um, it's very nice, small city, just like Malmo, same size, uh, slightly more Michelin starred restaurants. Yeah. Um, that's not the reason, though, but the, the reason is the whole um, history of food there. It's a vibrant food city. It's beautiful. Yeah. They have food clubs for men called Chocos, and the women are doing the dishes. And it's a beautiful history of food in that city. And hopefully, we like to bring some of their spirit to. I think we have, I mean, we established a little bit about the collaboration by speaking about Mugaritz and that we're doing, that we actually did their book. And this is important to us. And we're between the two of us, we have also developed a way how to work together, how to collaborate. 
being a photographer and designer, and not only being a photographer and designer at all times. I think we're creative together. We're definitely creative together. Yeah. Sometimes, of course, being married, it's too much. Carrying the work with you at all times, at home, constantly thinking. But I think we manage pretty well. And we are even managed to, to create what we call our creative space. Uh, that's ob obviously not our space here in Malmo, but... <laughs> All the images here, they are from, uh, I would say, mo most of them from uh, Fool magazine, our magazine we make, and from stories we tell. This is from Jap Japan, obviously. Yeah, usually when we speak, uh, we speak about Fool magazine, and we show loads of images. And But this time we decided to speak a little bit more, and uh, more about what we actually do, besides Fool magazine as well. And you would actually not see anything, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, because it's really, so you really have bright. To get, you yeah. have to get the magazine. Yeah. That's the best way to, to have an We idea. have an office in the city center of Malmö. It's 175 square meters. And we call it full headquarters. And in this space, because it's quite large, we have tried to do, we, we are still working on it, to establish different environments, I would say. So we have a gastronomic gallery. And uh, what is that? Well, what the hell is that? Yeah, uh, We were thought, oh God, this is so unique. We thought of this uh, kind of thing about doing a gastronomic gallery, showcasing art, f photography, everything that's related to food and gastronomy in some way. And uh, But then we found out that uh, Joseph Beuys made it in, in New York already in 1960s. So. Well, <laughs> then we felt more confident and triggered to do even more. Yeah, and so maybe we'll one day we should uh, try to show some boys' works. Yeah, and Monday, and Monday to Friday there is a lunch in the gallery. So I think we are the most visited gallery in Malmö. And the lunch is provided by Saltenport Canteen. They do take out only and it's quite fantastic, I think, to mm. have them there. But if you plan to go right now, like this week, or in the next uh, six weeks, don't. Because uh, Ola, one of the co-owners here, besides Sebastian, he broke his leg. So they were forced to close the city location with us. And that's also, very, very uh, egoistically, we're missing our lunch place. Yeah, <laughs> true. So we've been here we, twice we, already. Uh, we're standing and looking at each other. So, <laughs> where do we eat now? The best lunch was like five steps away. But it's quite fantastic because we've been working with Ola and Sebastian, the founder of Saltimport Canteen, for a long time. Because they had a fine dining restaurant here in Malmö called Trio. That was a very, very beautiful restaurant. And when we brought chefs there from all over the world, they asked, how many stars do you have? Because they thought it was a two-star restaurant. But now they do these lunches. They are really, really brilliant. Yeah, and it's packed. Yeah. So, but we also naturally have our office there, where we sit down and do the hard work for clients and for our magazine, for instance. It's quite flexible, uh, sometimes only the two of us, sometimes five of us. Yeah. It all depends. And, and of course, oh, sorry. No, and we have a kitchen, and that is, a, of course, we do a food magazine, of course, and they, uh, most of our clients are food or gastronomic related. And this kitchen, kitchen is large, uh, so we can have events there, cook, or just sit down and speak, or have a wine tasting. Absolutely. It, it's big, but it's not as big as this. We were thinking about hosting this event there, but well, seeing all of you who, has, who have come for this free breakfast and maybe listening to us, it will be possible, I think. So this is our creative workspace. In an ideal world, we uh, think of it as a little bit of an Andy Warhol factory in our dreams. So we communicate with images, words, and design. And we try to communicate what we do and what others do. Well, this is one way of communicating. Just telling you a little about, bit about the image. It's from uh, our Italian issue that we made. It's back here. I found it in the, in the toilet, actually. It's... I hung it there like a year and a half, two years ago. <laughs> it's still there. That's why you love these guys. Uh, anyway, photography is a big part for us, of course, me being a photographer. Um, this is from the Italian issue, and uh, this is one way to make people talk, <laughs> maybe. 
this is a very particular photo shoot, I would say, because we work with a three-star restaurant based in, in, in Modena. It's called Osteria Francescana. And uh, we have been there many, many times. And when we decided to do a story on them, we, what can we do? We don't want to shoot their food. We just don't want to do only images from, from the kitchen or chef uh, fishing eel or, or something. So let's do something fun, because we know these people. Definitely. So well, but you, you should look at the mag in a magazine. It's yeah. much, much better than this stupid thing here. So anyway, 2004, if we look back, yeah. we, or, well, you mostly made the draft for Fool magazine. And 2012, we finally found, had the time and found the money to publish uh, the first issue. And it was quite a success, and we had some very good press, especially in the United States. And it sold out <coughs> our 5,000 copies, like, wash, gone. <laughs> and, um, which was great. So now we print a bit more, 15,000. And we were also actually awarded the, uh, after <laughs> in 2013, after not even a year in business, titled the world's best food magazine. And um, when they called us, we thought, no, this is not true. We don't believe you guys. We only do two, have done two issues. That's it. Hardly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it's one of those, you think, oh, this is a prank call. This is totally not real. But um, was, we didn't enter any competition. What the hell is this? No way. <laughs> but uh, well, apparently. So we have a kind of ugly diploma sitting in the toilet. In yeah, but we're happy. Offices. We're happy. <laughs> we're we're happy. not complaining. No. So why, why do a food magazine? Because there's so many food magazines out there. Why do another one? And we have been working. I've been the art director of Swedish Gourmet magazine a long, long time ago. And um, traveling with that magazine, meeting chefs and people working in the industry all over the world, traveling with the Swedish magazine in Swedish, I realized it was so important for the people to, to see images and that you can actually communicate with the images despite being a Swedish magazine in mm. Swedish. Mm. And when we started to speak, when we met actually, we started to speak about doing a magazine almost immediately. Because we thought there was really no magazine out there or no publication that reflected what we want to do. Me as a photographer, working for other publications, you were always asked to do things in a very limited way, to do things after like a mold almost, to fit like the reality into something, rather than spending time with people, absorbing, learning, and trying to understand. And that is, I think, is key to what we do, is trying to understand these people uh, that we work with, because it is about people really yes and and for me sitting at an office uh, not being the person out there being the journalist or being uh, the photographer meeting all these fantastic people it was frustrating and it's so much more fun to do a magazine our our own and if we meet amazing people and we have all these amazing again images why not do it on 20 pages in the magazine instead of six or four pages mm. so let's do a magazine of course so we started to think about what was our inspirations yeah absolutely the, the inspirations to us were very much more like fashion magazines actually mm. we're looking at fashion to see the way they handle images and telling stories without a lot of words but we also, like Vogue, for instance, Vogue Italia, we always, both of us, we loved the old days of Vogue Italia when it was really the magazine to look at. But also, a magazine like New Yorker for long text, well-edited text. So we allow writers to write very, very long text. We encourage them, actually, and they, sometimes they, they ask us, oh, so how long would you like this text to be? So we have no idea. You must find your ideal kind of the balance, you, you know very well. And they, they're all I mean, skilled writers, so they know exactly. Our long texts are never shorter than 1,500 words. And s sometimes there are like 5,000 words. That's a lot of text. But people actually read Fool, and we love it. Yeah. Because that was one of the main goals, to make a magazine that was readable, not to 
fancy in design, but readable typefaces, good size, so you can actually manage to get through all these long texts. And also looking at like Life magazine, the classic Life magazine, the way they handled these long stories and images, telling a story and images, the classic Life way, that's also something we looked at, of yeah. course, and we're very inspired by. And so, but, but, but there's one big question that we get asked sometimes, why no recipes? Yes. We decided to make a magazine without recipes, mm. and that was for a reason. I mean, all of you have cookbooks. Cookbooks are made in, I mean, so many cookbooks every year in each country. There are cooking shows on TV. There is food everywhere. And if you're going to cook something, you never find a recipe in your cookbook. You Google it, right? It's more the struggle to find the actual cookbook, maybe, that you think you might have the recipe that you're looking for, but where is it? And working so. with high-end chefs, like we do, mostly, the recipes are sometimes impossible to make. You can't find the ingredients, you don't have a circulator mm. or a, one of these machines that you dry stuff in, or, so why not just exclude the recipes in total and just write stories about these people instead? And in short, we always say, well, you don't buy Vogue to make your own clothes or get like sewing patterns. You buy, you buy Vogue for inspiration. We want to inspire people. We actually we focus on people as well. And we travel a lot, of course, to meet these people. In the latest issue, which is not this one, but called, we always have a yeah. title, so this is called the fusion issue. And um, yes, show it to the people. And um, traveling is extremely important and meeting people. And in this issue, we went from Chile to Turkey and to California. And um, it's all about meeting these people and giving them a voice and discovering things. Because during this journey, I, we come back to this time after time, it's about meeting people and making discoveries. And we take a lot of chances, I would say, yeah. but most of them pay off as well. But it's not only about chefs. No, it's, I have to add something here as well, because we never go somewhere for just a couple of days. We always spend a little bit of time with these people as well. Because if you just go there shortly, and you don't discover anything, you don't, they don't open up to you, and we try to make them open up to us so we get a unique story for us. And like Lotta said before about the image you saw from the Italian issue, from Austria Franciscana, we try to push things in every way. We try to push our writers, we try to push ourselves, doing stories, and we pu eventually, of course, we push the people like that shoot, I remember when we did. Yeah, um, okay. I go kind of into a very strange mode when I shoot. I don't really see anything else but the final pictures and my ideas. So you almost have to stop me sometimes from pushing these people over, yeah. the, over, the, over the edge of the cliff. But that was quite particular because the whole Italian issue is it's about Italy. And, um, but not only Italy, Italians in the world and we even worked with only Italian illustrators throughout the issue, and just to push ourselves to do something different. Yeah. And the that same was difficult, and the same but fun. We, we, tr we try to invent these things almost to make life difficult for ourselves, because we, we have the themes that we come back to later, and um, we also, like the illustrators for the latest issue, we have a story about natural Australian winemakers, and of course, you decide and we decide that we should have only Australian illustrators. Yeah. And uh, that's, it's, a very, it's a fun way to work, like Noma, for instance, in, in Copenhagen. They invented a way of thinking about produce and stuff that should be... They built limits, framework, that was a framework yeah, yeah. almost. The same, we do the same thing to, to focus and to get more... To get sharper. We kind of make it life difficult and put up some... some I'm not a director and you're a photographer. Sometimes we write, but not all the time. And we work with really good writers. Um, we're approached by writers weekly from everywhere in the world. And we meet a lot of writers as well. 
So we try to work with writers, writers that have an expert uh, field. And sometimes they are Japanese, German, most of the time I would say, and German and in um, Spanish or, or Italian. Italian. And of course, they don't write in English, they write in their native languages. Okay, this makes it a little bit difficult for us because we don't speak Japanese. So we receive this text that we committed them to, to write for us because we always have all the other ideas for the articles in the magazine. They will receive the text. What do we do? Google Translate, of course. We love internet. So we Google Translate to be able to give them feedback so they can rewrite because they always have to rewrite a little bit. Always. Yeah. And then when we're done, we of course seek up a professional translator, not a Google Translate. Yeah. And they are also based everywhere in the world. Yeah. So they work with the translation. Exactly. And sometimes it's uh, some texts, especially in the latest issue, there was one that in, uh, written in Italian that the first translator, the old super professional, say, no, I can't do this. I don't understand the thing. Okay, so we turn to another one thinking, yeah. oh, come on. Well, same thing yeah. happened again. What is this? We don't, I don't understand the thing. But eventually, we solved it. We did, yeah. And it's, it's uh, well, we have some quirky stuff in the magazine, and that's, we're proud to. So we're doing full magazine in English. True, because if we would do it in Swedish, we only reach, I don't 200? know. 200? Well, there are nine million, <laughs> nine million people. That's the population of yeah. London, of course. So, uh, we, of course, we decided to do it in English. So we work with three British, no, English speaking editors. Two are British. One is based in Barcelona and one is based in London. And the third one, she is Australian and based in Copenhagen. So we collaborate with all of these people through internet. Of course. Yeah. Which is a big help for us. Absolutely, it's the only way to do it. Yeah, to because we need to we make it proper English, otherwise, otherwise we British like English and not American English, if you're not like an American fools. writer. Yeah. No, but I, we, I spoke earlier about the themes. We always have themes, and they, like the first one was naturals, and we had done origins, below the surface, Italy, religion, and now fusion. And we are planning the seventh one, that will be out hopefully early 2016. Yeah. But these themes, they're a way to keep us in... Um, on track. Yeah, on leech in a way, <laughs> to not, not to run away. Because we want to do a, a magazine that is, has a long shelf life. The best before date should be way God. I mean, we really, we try to do something timeless, I would say. It's super ways. important to us, because we, especially since we are only out twice a year, if we're lucky. Yeah. Because of course we have to do other things, like uh, it all comes down to one thing, it's uh, to finance it and find money to do this project. Because it might say, sound glamorous, all this uh, traveling and everything, but we actually pay for everything and we try to, to make things in a way that we actually pay people for working for us. And uh, it costs a lot of money, so we have to do other work, we have to do some advertising work, we have to do other stuff. And actually, it's not a bad thing, because it's really good to, to, because that contributes a lot as well to the whole, to even to the magazine, I would say. Absolutely, I would love to be based here in Malmö as well, because it's a convenient city to live in. And we are so close to, I think, the world's best airport. It's just 17 minutes away. And, um, but currently, we work with clients in, in three continents, yeah, actually, we work with the latest one. We just came from Vienna in Austria. We work with a restaurant there, one Michelin starred restaurant called um, Constantin Filippou. And we're making their book. He uh, saw the magazine and we met up. And uh, he's kind of unusual because if I say Austria, an Austrian cuisine, you go like, okay, Wiener Schnitzel, maybe. But this guy, he's, uh, his father is Greek, his mother is Austrian, and he's born in Austria. And um, he's a very special guy. So we work with him. We're very proud of it. Yeah. We have a client in Singapore, another restaurant. And uh, we work with Krug. Yeah, Krug, Champagne. Uh, we've been shooting here, actually. On this very floor, uh, yeah. I, I shot for, for Krug Champagne. So very fun, fun shoot. Krug in France. And we, of course, we have clients here in Sweden. 
um, yeah, we work with uh, the best restaurant in Sweden, I think, Fäviken, and um, his hot dog stand and the charcuterie factory. So we do packaging and identities for them. Mm -hmm. And I work with uh, a couple of restaurants in Copenhagen, Rele, Manfreds, and Best, all coming out of uh, the hands of Christian Puglisi, wonderful chef. And um, I was happy, well, enough to, to make his uh, book. Great, great, oh, <laughs> a great book, by the way. You also do other things like working with the Philippa K. Olens, the Nordic Watercolor Museum, and Bastard. Yeah, and of here course, in, in, Malmö. in Malmö we have our, uh, very close to, yeah, Bastard and Southern Port. That's why my voice is a bit. We went to Bastard yesterday, maybe. It was all, very all, loud. All, all of you did as well. So this morning I woke up like, ah, can't hardly speak. Or well, you went to the concert with Thorstrom, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So. So we work with brand identity, film photography, we do web, we do interiors, and we work with text production, food books and art books, and brand strate strategies. And we, we were happy to be here, of course, because one of the few times somebody has asked us to do something back in Malmö, our home city, because uh, we, we participated like in conferences all around the world, and uh, which is great fun. And this fall, we're doing two photography exhibitions, one in Vejle in Denmark, and one in Helsinki during the Helsinki Design Week. Yeah, and at the same time, we will also be part of the expo in, in Milan, mm. in an expert panel speaking about Italian food for some reason, and, uh, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun to be able to do all these things. Mm. And, um, well, we're only two people. We are the fools. And we love what we do. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.